Faux 3D in After Effects is the most satisfying illusion. illusion. And to learn how to do it, we're going to reverse engineer some of these animations. And doesn't this just get you going? It certainly revs my motion design engine and makes my graphics card rock hard. But enough foreplay. There are many different ways to approach Faux 3D, so we're going to look at three variations. But be warned, the last one is a bit controversial. So let's set the mood with a rotating cube. We're going to start with a square and a duplicate reference of that square, as well as a midway reference point for the animation. Then we're going to drop in keyframes for the position and scale of our square, 10 frames apart. Now let's animate the position and scale of our second keyframes to match our reference. We'll need to break the link in our scale property so that we can animate the scale on just the Y axis, like this. Then on our third set of keyframes, we're going to snap our square to the edge of the reference by holding Control or Command on Mac and take our scale to zero. And this is what we get. Now we can just duplicate this layer, select all the keyframes, right click and select time reverse keyframes and change the positions of the first and second keyframes to the opposite side. And isn't that magical? It's also worth mentioning that when it comes to faux 3D, path animation can also be really powerful to achieve similar results. But this is only the tip of the iceberg and this next animation is created in a way that I think is really interesting. So let's begin with a circle. We're going to start by dropping in a keyframe on the internal scale property of this shape. So note the difference between the internal and external transform properties because this is an important step. So we'll drop in a scale keyframe, move 16 frames ahead and set the X scale to zero to create this animation. Now let's duplicate that circle twice Group them with Ctrl or Command G and then move the group below. Now for the top one, we'll remove the animation, convert it to a Bezier path and delete the right path point and adjust it like this. Let's change the color quickly so you can see what's happening. And now we just need to move the first scale keyframe of our second circle duplicate to the midpoint. And how fresh is that? Now I just want to quickly mention why I set up these two layers like this and that's because I can now add a merge path to combine these two shapes so that if I add a gradient fill as well, it gets applied across both shapes. At this point, the only thing left to do is to trim the layer to the midpoint, duplicate the layer, right click to select time reverse layer, right click again to select transform and flip horizontal, then just move the layer over to the right and we're done. And if you're not feeling hot and bothered at this point, this next trick is definitely going to get you there. Let's pre-compose these two layers, then right click and enable time remapping. We're also going to add an angle control effect to this layer. Then let's add an expression to the time remap by alt clicking the stopwatch and pick whipping the angle control. Let's divide this by our frame rate, which in this case is 24 frames. Then let's add an expression to the angle control, pick whip itself and add a percentage symbol and the number of frames of this entire composition, which in this case is 60 frames. Now we have full control over the fake rotation and it can be animated however we like. Now I'm sure you're about to blow with all this satisfaction, but before we move on to the climax, please slap that like button so I know I'm getting you off. Now I know this may be a controversial viewpoint, but in some cases the best faux 3D is actually real 3D. So that's what we're going to tackle in this last part because it's really powerful and not as difficult as you might think. Once again, let's start with a circle. First, click on this button to change our circle into a 3D layer. Then hit Ctrl K to open up our composition settings and then change our 3D renderer to Cinema 4D. This allows us to access geometry options where we can extrude our shape. So let's change our view to two views and make sure the second view is from the top. And if we change our extrusion to 120, you can see what happens. Instant three-dimensionality. Before we move on, let's quickly duplicate this layer group and add a merge pass set it to subtract and then scale down our bottom circle. And another cool little trick here, if we go up to add, you'll see that we have a bunch of additional properties we can work with. So to give you a sense of how this works, if we group all of this and click on add, side and then color, we can control the color of the extrusion. How dope is that? It's good practice when animating objects like this to use a null. So if we add a null, make it 3D, change the position of our circle to move backwards in Z space by half of the extrusion depth, which works out to 60, we can now parent the circle to the null so that we are rotating from the center of the 3D object, like this. Now I want to briefly cover the workflow I used to add a gradient to this, 
because I think it's pretty interesting. For starters, I pre-composed the 3D circle we made and duplicated it. Then on the first duplicate, I used a color key to remove the white part of the 3D object. And then I did the same for the second object, but removing the red part. Then I just created this radial gradient and added a blur effect and scatter effect to create some noise. I then duplicated that gradient and moved it to the left. Then I used the 3D object layers as mats for each of the gradient layers and animated the top gradient to achieve this. To get the full picture of how this final animation came together with all the sexy gradients, I provided the project files for free in the description. I hope you're satisfied with these magical illusions and can go forth and satisfy your own animations repeatedly with the techniques you've learned. If you'd like to see more tutorials where I spend days reverse engineering pro animations so you don't have to, hit subscribe. <laughs>